Portable handhelds are a dime a dozen these days. Most of them are emulation devices capable of running many different systems and they do a pretty good job. However, what if we took an original PlayStation 2 motherboard and modded it to fit into a handheld form factor and ran it off batteries? Sounds too good to be true? Well, over on AliExpress, there are sellers that have been doing these types of modifications for a while now. It's possible to get handheld versions of the Sega Dreamcast, Nintendo GameCube, Nintendo Wii U. But the one that really did catch my interest is this thing here, which is a handheld PlayStation 2. Now, this is not a clone system or an emulation device. This is actually real hardware in a very small handheld form factor. And we're gonna take a look at this on the channel today because this is a pretty interesting device. Now, I ended up ordering this on AliExpress about a month ago. And I guess what they actually do is they built these on demand for you. So they don't actually have like a warehouse full of these things. If you do want to order one, essentially what they do is go ahead and I think basically just construct a portable PlayStation 2 for you and then ship it out. Because it took about four weeks or so for me to get this device. Now I should mention the total cost of this product, including shipping to my house in the US, was just under $500. Now that is quite expensive. But if you think about it, if you did end up commissioning someone to make a portable handheld for you in this fashion, they'd probably end up charging you a lot more money. And of course, there are other people that would just go the emulation route. And I'm not here to tell you which way that you should go. I obviously love emulation and I love original hardware, but this portable PlayStation 2 is actually a fairly decent device. I should also mention that this is not a sponsored or paid for review. A portable PS2 is something that I've had my eye on for quite some time. And I did want to give you guys my impression because I'm sure there are some people out there that would be interested in a device like this. Now this handheld itself, is actually quite chunky in size. And we can do some comparisons with other systems. For example, the PlayStation Vita here, as you can see, it kind of just really just eclipses it. But you've also got the Valve Steam Deck, of course, which is the handheld of the moment right now. But what you're probably not getting from this view is how thick this thing is. This is a thick boy right here. It's quite chunky. And uh, there's a lot of circuitry that's packed into this thing. And I'm actually quite fascinated as to how they were able to squeeze in an original PlayStation 2 motherboard into a form factor like this. Let's go ahead and look around the system for a little bit. You can see that we've got the kind of traditional PlayStation 2 controller setup, and you can see that we've got the two analog sticks right here. Now, these appear to be from an original PlayStation 2 controller. They feel exactly the same as a PlayStation 2 controller. And as you can see here, we've got the four PlayStation buttons as well. And again, this feels like they basically just took an original controller to make this work. These pieces here are certainly not 3D printed. They are the real deal. So the controller itself appears to be kind of legitimate parts. And then over here, you've got this D-pad. Now, I will say that this D-pad is not original. It's aftermarket and it feels a little sticky but uh, it's, it's not too bad. And we have this red button down here, which is essentially the power switch for the system. But the way this thing works is actually quite unique. Now, if we turn the system on its back, you can see that we've got the L1 and L2 buttons, and these are most definitely 3D printed. And we've got our R1 and R2. Now, this here is our power. So we can connect this up to an AC adapter to basically charge the system and run it on AC power. This here is the main power switch to turn on the display. And I'll kind of come back and explain how this all works. This here is a button to change the video output from HDMI or to RGB. These two buttons here are for the volume control. And we've got a USB port here as well and if you remember the Sony PlayStation 2 does have USB on board, but you do recall that it's only using USB 1.1. And the reason why I mentioned that will become important here shortly when I show you how the system works. Rounding out the PS2 portable, there are two dual stereo speakers, as well as the seven inch IPS panel display. Now this is a 16 by nine aspect ratio display but there are options where you can set it to a four x three aspect ratio should you choose to do so. 
The good news is this display will also take advantage of games that run in progressive scan mode, giving the games that support it just that extra little bit of clarity. Now, if we take a look at the back of the system here, it's pretty much model after the PlayStation Vita on the back of a Vita handheld is a very similar type of thing. Now, of course, the Vita has the touchpad on the back. This doesn't have anything like that, but this case is really shaped in the same kind of mold as a PS Vita. So it kind of gives that distinguished look that this is some type of official PlayStation handheld. Now, I will say that I actually quite like the way this feels. This is a very, very chunky case, and it actually feels pretty good, all things considered. But the overall impression I have of this case is, even though it's clearly 3D printed, you can tell, it is a pretty good case overall and it feels good. I think the fact that they did use original parts here for the buttons and the control sticks here does go a long way. But the thickness itself, even though this is a very thick device, especially compared to other handhelds that are on the market, actually feels pretty good. It's quite surprising to me that it, it feels the way it does. Powering up the unit is quite interesting and unique. When I first got the system, I was convinced that it was defective. But actually what's happening here is, there are two power switches that you need to be aware of. When you turn on the main power switch, this only enables the display, which means it's still waiting for you to turn on the PlayStation 2 itself. And to do this, you need to press the red button. So keep this in mind. But when you want to turn off the system, all you need to do is switch the power switch back off. Now, because this is a modded system and there is no DVD drive, the way this works is simply to load into Free McBoot. Now, for those people that don't know what Free McBoot is, it's simply a method of running homebrew applications directly from the memory card. From here, we can launch into a tool known as OPL or the Open PS2 Loader. This means we can now install all our games as .iso images on our USB stick, plug that USB stick into our PlayStation 2 portable, and then run the games. Now with that all said, how do the games look and play? Well, they play exactly like you would expect on real PlayStation 2 hardware, and that is near flawlessly. I do say near flawlessly, because the only issue that you may come across is that the USB 1.1 protocol is dreadfully slow and you may have some issues with full motion videos stuttering at times. But I might add that there has been a ton of work to minimize this. I remember when I messed around with OPL back in 2018 or so, I was seeing stuttering in many different games and overall things have come a long way. I've only noticed some slight stuttering in a small amount of games. The seven inch IPS display is quite serviceable. It's certainly not top of the line or anything like that, but it gets the job done, especially when games are put into progressive scan mode. Things do look pretty good and they pop rather well. I should also mention that the battery life on this thing is actually pretty decent. From a full charge, I ran Gran Turismo 4 replay races and managed around three hours of battery life on a single charge. That's not too shabby at all. Now we can't make this video without taking a closer look at the internals of this thing because there is a ton of stuff packed into this small PS2 portable. And to open up the system, it's pretty simple. There are two Phillips head screws on the back, two at the top and two at the bottom of the case. Now from here, you can simply open up the device like a clamshell, but just be careful that you don't yank out any of the cables. You can immediately note the battery cells that power the device on each side. These are certainly quite large, but you can see why we're getting three hours of battery life. You can also note that the cable management and soldering here is pretty decent. I didn't notice any hot glue being used at all, and the cable routing looks pretty clean. Now for me, the most intriguing part and the reason why I did want to open up this system is to take a closer look at the PS2 motherboard. And here it is, completely cut down to its bare essentials to fit into this case. This is a pretty impressive modding job overall. And with the few days that I've had with this thing, so far it's been rock solid. So in conclusion, should you pick up one of these PS2 portable handhelds? Well, of course that is entirely up to you. But for those people that only like original hardware with no emulation, then this device is pretty good and I can recommend it. Load up all your PS2 classic games on your USB flash drive and have fun. And with that three hours of battery life, this isn't just a gimmick. It's a pretty decent portable device overall. 
And for those that don't really care about how they play PS2 games, then this is definitely not for you. Grab PCSX2 and some ROMs and play that instead. But overall, I was pleasantly surprised with how good this device is. I thought maybe it would be something that would break down after a few days and it would be cheaply put together, but it turns out that's not the case at all. And if you guys want me to take a look at some of the other portable handhelds that are available, such as the GameCube, Sega Dreamcast, and Nintendo Wii, just to name a few, let me know in the comments below. But for now, guys, we are going to leave it here for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.